So we are going to go on now to algebraic data terms. Okay. So we've laid the ground, and I appreciate your patience. We talked about exponential functions. We talked about these uh, monoidal categories, and those were built atop this notion of a product category. And then we talked about monoidal structures and about how Hask has two monoidal structures, one based on what? One based on product and the other on co-product. Awesome. So now we can enjoy the fruits of, uh, of that work. Enjoy the fruits of that hard slog. Okay. Um, later we'll enjoy other fruits um, in the form of symmetric monodal categories and diagrams and and diagrams that just build into them the sort of immediate intuitions we have visual. But today we're talking about algebraic data types, and that's where we're going to finish. This is going to be the grand finale. So let's talk about algebraic data types. And these are rooted in those monoidal structures. And for anyone who wants to learn more, I had referred you to one of these, um, to one of these videos, the first of them. But I want to highlight that Bartosz Mielewski, in his brilliant way, has several other videos, uh, one on algebraic data types itself, but without dealing with, um, with uh, exponential objects. And then uh, type algebras where he fills in some things with exponential objects. And there's also some discussion of the, the functoriality of it. Um, okay, so um, before we jump in here, I, I, I want to emphasize a couple of themes that are going to run throughout. One is that isomorphism. Um, when, when we say that two things are the same from the perspective of algebraic data types, we're going to be talking in the sense that they're isomorphic and the way that we've written on the board already, like one comma quantity two comma three is not exactly the same as quantity one comma two, then comma three, but it is isomorphic to it, right? And we said that as well with some of these identities up here, we take a monoidal product with the terminal object, right? Where um, pairing up bool with with the singleton object is not exactly exactly bool, but it's something isomorphic to bool. We just have bool with this extra thing stuck on that doesn't give any extra information. And we call them the same because they're isomorphic. And we're gonna be looking at that, okay? They're not, in general here, we're not gonna have exact uh, equalities, um, but we're gonna be able to put in place isomorphism maps any time we want that will give us one to the other. So tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Okay, um, so product and co-product will be associated here up to isomorphism, um, uh, uh, initial and terminal objects, our unit objects uh, up to isomorphism. Um, and in fact, product and co-product will be commutative up to isomorphism. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by uh, product being commutative or symmetric up to isomorphism? So when, when we're talking about commutivity and symmetry, what what might we we be comparing? See if there is one thing. What a cross b with b cross b cross a? Yeah, and b cross a. Okay. So if I look a little different, but the information the information is identical. Yeah. It, it's it. If we know we have one, we can switch to the other. We can have swap. All they do is swap the two. And in fact, it's its own inverse, right? It's on its own. It's just its own inverse. It's swap. You just swap either one. So given one, we can get the other loss of so no loss of it. It's a identical. Um. Uh. And it turns out that co-product product with terminal and initial object content constitute what's called an abstract algebra semi-ring um, or, or what's called a rig, a ring without negatives. <laughs> There's no <laughs> negative, right? Uh, and, um, and distributive laws, it turns out apply. Um, exponential objects are going to be woven in here to enhance the algebra and it all fits together. And even recursive data types 
things like a list or things like a tree fit in here beautifully and sort of uh, eerily well, okay? Um, so um, we're dealing here with the world of types. Uh, I'm not gonna comment on the motivation of types, but there's many good reasons to have types you don't get, amongst other things, runtime errors. You can provably take advantage of transformations to give you optimizations, et cetera. Um, now, we're gonna be talking about algebraic data types today. And it turns out that these are going to have all sorts of wonderful consequences. Building up types out of these operations like products, co-products, exponentials. This may seem modest, it may seem like, oh yeah, okay, it's, it's kind, of, kind of fun and cool. But it turns out you, you can build up a lot of complex types out of these things. A lot of things we think of as like a struct or a record or in a class are really products of types. You have this and this and this, you know, all together, right? You have all of them. Um, uh, and if you build these things up, not only do you get that, you can automatically derive functors to lift functions over them to map them, even if they're multiple levels deep. If you have products of sums, of exponentials, it can derive automatically a uh, a lifting of it to map it from something mm -hmm. over doubles to over ints or something from ints over rules or what have you. You can perform uh, type inference uh, on these and you have clarity of reasoning and, and you can uh, engage in optimization and simplifications that will satisfy invariance. So, so let's talk about some of the properties of algebraic data types. So we're going to denote here, and you know I probably should be uh, criticized for it for sometimes using um, a notation star, sometimes just putting a b to mean a times b, and really I can use you know um, the, the 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 notation I've been using with the cross right like this. Um, I could have used that. But I'm going to be a bit loose here, and I hope you'll it won't inhibit understanding. So some of these things we've written down already, like um, you know, if we have a data type, uh, call it A, and we pair it up with uh, a terminal terminal object here, right? Um, here, terminal object is what? What's the terminal object in Hask? It's singleton. Yeah, it's the unit or the unit. It's called unit. Maybe you now know why it's called units, right? Uh, it's multiplicative unit, right? We get a back up to isomorphs, right? And and that's exactly what's written up here, right? A comma this extra piece of junk that doesn't give you any information. It's just a, right? The same information, say a cross zero. We talked about this before. Is basically what? Why is a why is a cross zero? Zero. Remember in has what's the what what does zero represent in general in a category? It represents the initial object. And what's the initial object in has? Yeah, void or empty set, right? Empty set. Um we can, I mean, yes, it's void. It it consists of no elements. It's a data type with no no possible elements. Why is pairing pairing something up with thing that takes no elements? Why is that the same as having no possible elements. There's no way to, there's no way to build it, right? There's no possible elements of it, right? So for all intents and purposes, it's zero because there are none of them. Zero is the data type where there's none void. And a a product with that has none of them, okay? In a pair with that, right? Okay, how about A, B, Isomorphic to VA. Well, we had it down there, but do, do you buy the fact that they're isomorphic? They're, they're basically, look, given one, you can switch to the other and vice versa. In fact, the swapping and it's item button. You, you, you do it twice and you get the same thing back, right? Okay, um, how about A times B product with C being the same as A times the product of BC? Well, that's where do we recognize that? These are a lot of the basic ones. Where do we recognize that from? It's this I, I wrote on the board. What is what is this called? What do we call this? 
associativity, right? And and that's basic to any monodal category. You have to have this at least up to isomorphs. And it turns out there's levels of monodal categories, strict monodal categories would have to be exactly equal a uh, a monodal category that's uh, strong would have these be isomorphic, and one that's uh, called lax would have it just be what's called an natural <laughs> transformation. Okay, uh, how about A plus B be the same isomorphic to B plus plus A? Why why is that? What what, what would that look like? Yeah, either A, B is kind of the same as either B, A, right? In one case, A is on the left, in the other case, and, and B is on the right. In the other case, it's A is on the right and B is on the left. But it's the same information. Do you see it? It's it's just different names for left and right, right? It's just different labels, okay? We just have to remember. So given one, could you get the other? Yeah, given one, I mean, it's trivial to, to sort of swap them to, right? To, yeah, change change order. How about A plus zero is the same as A? Well, we went through that before, right? Um, remember that? Um, well, give me the intuition. Why Why is it to take the co-product with the initial object? Initial object in Hask is what again? Void. So it's the thing with no elements, the thing you can't build because there's not enough, no possibilities. So why is why is having an either that or that the same as a? And no extra information. There's no extra possibilities. Okay, now this one is probably new to you. This is actually very important for programming. Um, a plus one is isomorphic in terms of the number of possibilities with maybe of a. Why is that? Yeah, we have one extra possibility to A, and that extra possibility in our case represents nothing. Nothing. That's a good point. So for those not familiar with it, maybe it's, it's actually a monad, which we're not going to cover here, but um, so it has extra extra things, extra um, structure, and sort of, it has extra properties beyond what we have through a, a functor. It isn't in a functor, but it has the same type algebra associated with it, but but um, a maybe fundamentally either, so it either has an A, value of A, or it has nothing. And so it's, when I say A plus one is isomorphic to it, it's because a maybe of A has either any of the elements of A, count them, right? Um, or nothing, and that's the one. Do you see that? This is actually how we represent when, when we're dealing with a set of possibilities, maybe it's represent a plus one. It's a, so if we if maybe if it's maybe a bool, how many possibilities do we have? Three. Two, Three. two plus plus nothing. Yeah. So it's either either we have true on the left, or we have false on the left, or we have what? No, 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 right, right. Um, so it's isomorphic to this. Do you see that? Um, I, I should emphasize this is one more element than A, than all the, the possibilities of A, right? It's like tagging one more thing onto A, one more possibility. If it were, um, if it were instead uh, A plus two, how many total possibilities would there be? All of those of two more than A has. If it were A times two, how many possibilities would there be? A plus eight. Sorry. A plus eight. No, A times times two. So A, you can think of it as like inch cross bool, right? Um, so A cross two. How many possibilities does that have? Two times A. Two times A. Because we have all the possibilities when the, the second value is is its first possible value, and then all the possibilities when it's its second possible value. So the total number of possibilities is uh, is two times the number in A. Let, let me give you an example. If this were int cross what? what what's like two? Fool. So we have all the possible values of int, 
when we have false here, and then we have all the possible values of n when we have true here. So we have two times the number, right? Or does that make sense? No, two two times the number of possibilities of a. Because we have all the possibilities of a, and this value is is has one of its possible values, and then all the values of a when they have the second. But it's not all combinations of a and a. It's yeah. So it's all the values of n when we have false, all the values of n when we have true. Yeah. Okay. Um, about a plus b plus c is the same as this one on the right. What is that? That's just associativity of it as a as a, a monoidal structure. So okay, now now we're gonna have, start to have some extra fun though. These have been each about each of these in isolation. It's either about products or co-products. But let's let's now do more. Check this out. Um okay, so first of all, I would submit to you that product here uh, in daily life, we often think of it as an iterated co-product. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by, by to think of products? You know, going back to maybe grade school as kind of iterated co-products. We weren't using the name product and co-product. We we're using multiplication and addition. But why do I say it's like iterated? Because typically when you're using multiplication, so uh, x times 2 would be x times 2. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So if I want to say 3 <laughs> times 2, it's like adding 2 how many times? Three times, right? Um, can you can you say iteratively for that? Uh, give me explanation and yeah, yeah. We'll see that in the next slide. In, in Correct. Products? Correct. We will see. Yes. So iterated co-products give you products. Iterated products will give you exponentials. We'll see that in the next slide, which is fine. Right. Okay. So I would argue that a plus a is two a. Why? Why is that? Why is a plus a the, the, the same as isomorphic to 2a? Two, two so again, when we say 2a, it's like a cross 2, right? It's, it's like a, maybe a is ints and, and 2 is bools, right? So, so what is 2a is we have all the values of a, no, twice over, right? We have all the values of a when the for for the for the first because it's two times it meaning for each of the two possibilities in the first thing if it's two times a for each of those two possibilities we have any of the values of a so it's two the total number of possibilities is two times the number of possibilities of a right. Should search and notice a pattern here, <laughs> um, in terms of the number of possibilities. How about a plus a? What is that? What, what's plus represent if we think about it in terms of data types? It's like either, either yeah, either either um, potato, potato. Um, <laughs> um, you asked mostly say either, uh, you mostly say either. So um, you'll find me going back and forth. Um, uh, so So here it's either a or a. So why is that, how many possibilities do we have here? Twice. Twice of A, because we have all the possibilities for the left one, and then we have all the possibilities for the right one, right? So it's also 2A. Do you understand that? Yeah. Do you appreciate that? Okay. Um. Okay, now, now how about A times B plus C? I would argue it's A, a times B plus AC. You recognize that from algebra? Yeah. No. Why? Why is that the case? And if you think through the possibilities, um, imagine A is a bool, and imagine B is a set of two poss a set of three possibilities, and C is a set of four possibilities. So imagine, uh, or a set of let's say five possibilities. So suppose A is bool. I'm going to put this. Um, so suppose A is bool. Um, so what would A times this mean? It's it's like what? It's a pair, right? 
a uh, ghoul in the first element. And suppose B has three possibilities, maybe it's a enum or three possibilities or something like that, right? Or uh, in Haskell, uh, maybe a uh, class with, with three possibilities. And then five possibilities. Um, uh, so we say D, dead, you know, and we have five possibilities. Okay, so so how many, so B, so if we have B, you have three possibilities, C, you have five. How many possible things are there in a B plus C? Three for the first. And, eight. Sorry, eight. Because we have left, it could be any of those three. Right, it could be any of those five. So we have a total of how many? Eight. eight. Okay. And then we have to pair with bool, right? Sixteen. Sixteen. Because we have any of these eight for each possible value of A, right? Say bool. Yeah? So we have 16. Now, is that the same as a pair of bool and, and the threes? Mm -hmm. um, uh, plus a pair of bool and the in the in the in the fives, right? So a pair of bool and the threes will give how many possibilities? Six, right? Six. Um, and a pair of of uh, A, which is two, and the C's, uh, C can have five possibilities. So A paired with C can have how many? 10. And you add six and 10, you get 16, right? And it, it really kind of makes sense because look, you, you, you definitely have an A in the first element. And then you either have a, have a B, in which case you have an, an AB, uh, right? a pair of those, or you have an A and a, and a C, right? Um, and you have a, a pair of those. So it makes sense that they're kind of the same, right? Because the information you have is, is either that of an A and, and a B or, the, or that of an A and a C, one, one of those. You get it? Yeah. And so it, it, it kind of makes intuitive sense and it makes computational sense and mathematical sense in terms of the count of possibilities, right? Okay, now how about A plus B times C, C plus D? G give me, indicate to me what that kind of means. If this would be a what? If, if because we have times on the outside, that's the highest level operation here, this times that. What is this? This is a? A plus B. Well, okay, but it's a, it's a what of these two? It's a, what's a product? It's a, in, in, in Haskell, it's a, it begins with a P, pair. pair. It's a pair of either an A and B, or A or B, rather. either an A or B on the first element of the pair, and either a C or D at the other. Do you see that? And what I would argue is that this is, the same as, right? Either you have an A and a C, or you have an A and a D, or you have a B and a C, or you have a B and a D. Those are the possibilities, right? So I called it quad either. I, that's not something in, in hackage to my knowledge, but this is really what it boils down to. But you notice these things on the right, it's the sum of, of a bunch of products, right? You, you, you don't hear, unlike the previous one, you don't definitely have an A. You, you could have an A in the first one or a B, and you have all possible. Those are the four possibilities, right? Now, if you're seeing these, you may think, well, that's kind of funky. It's kind of weird. It's kind of quaint, kind of curious. But I think you should be start to thinking about it. If you put on your compiler hat, for those who have taken the compiler course, you should be thinking, well, wait a minute. If this is guaranteed to be the same size, we could potentially e evoke some optimizations here in terms of information, in terms of how we represent this information. Because after all, we can represent it in different ways, some of which, which might be more efficient. Okay, and, and if the C and D are also A and B, um, I would just note that this is the same as A, 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 B, B, A, B, B, right? Um, just, uh, and, and what is A, A, what is that? As a pair of A, it's, a, it's some value from A and another value from A, right? And B, B is like a value from B and a value from, from B as well. Okay, and now 
<laughs> now we start to have real fun. Okay, so now we, we leave in exponents. So first thing I did was just product by themselves and co-products by themselves. And a lot of these were basic things like associativity and unitality. Here we got combinations of products and co-products. Now we're leaving in exponents. Okay, so to answer Nona's question, um, known as the excellent question before. If product is the same as iterated co-product in this type algebra, in this algebraic data with algebraic data types, is exponent the same as iterated product? And the answer is yes, it is. Um, and we will see this from several perspectives. So to, to honor Noni's question, we'll go to several. So first of all, uh, if we have A times A to the B, what do we, so, so what, so we'll get it. Let's, let's orient ourselves. We just saw exponents earlier, but it's late in the day and we've gone through a lot of material. What is that, what is an A to the B represent? Yeah, B morphism A. And in past, what are morphisms? They are maps between types, right? Yeah, so they're like functions that take here, if it's A to the B, it takes what is an argument? Uh, type B. And for each possible value of that B, it gives a value of what? A. Yeah. Okay, so if we have a pair. Right. So, what is an A times an A to the B? Give me, give me, unpack that for me. That that's like a what? It's a pair of an A and an A and a and, and a and a well known B to an A. Right. Um, so it's a map from the exponent to yeah. Okay. So if if we have that, um, I would argue that. That's the same as this the same having the same thing as a to the b plus one. Now that looks wild, but why is that the case? So what's an a to the b? It tells us for what? For each possible value of a b, we get an a, right? So what is a what is a map from B plus one doing? So cool. Um, okay, so it's doing the thing that you showed earlier. Yes. It's B plus one, which is maybe there is a B. Yes. And even if there isn't, we're still going to have this morphism to it. That's right. So we're still going to have to pick an A. So we still pick an A out for this other value, right? The plus one. It's like you give me. Give me a, a value of A for all the possible values of B, every every one of those possible values of B. You give me back an A, but you also give me one more A. You give me one more A for free. I'm not quite for free. It's, you give me one more A for this extra value. And, and that's what this is, right? It's just packaging up the information differently. Do you see that? It's packaging it up. And again, optimizations just transform between different equivalent information stored in different ways. So again, thinking about optimizations here, there's all sorts of possibilities, but let's let's build in this more. Okay, so uh, no, no, uh, if you have C to the A plus B, I would claim it's the same as C to the A times C to the B. Why is that? What is a C to the A plus B? What is A plus B? It's a what? An either of an A or a B, right? And, and what's a C to the A plus B? It, given such an either A or, or either B, it has to specify what? Yeah, value of C. It has to be a map from either an A or, or a B down to C, right? And one way to specify that is to say, well, in, in order to map from a 
from a, either an A B to a C. I, I've got to give them that effectively from A's to C's. Information content wise, I mean, the way we handle it is different cases. If it's an A, choose this map to C. If it's a B, choose this map to C. So the information content is identical here. Um, for specifying a map from an A to a C and a B to a C, it's identical to specifying a map from A plus B to a C. That in order to specify this map from an A plus B to a C, you have to specify maps from how you handle an A and how you handle a B in terms of giving a C. Do you understand that? Um, okay, but let's uh, let's let's unpack this more. I want to see if we can tease out known as comment there and I'm gonna I have to apologize particularly for people online but let's let's think about this if you have exponentiation as iterated problem okay so so let's suppose we have a and I'm going to say a times a I should have had this in here. um maybe I'll just write it explicitly since I'm writing it down a times a if, if this follows through with our type algebra, what should this be equal to in terms of? So this is iterated. And so, so here we have a product. So give me something involving an exponential that's equal to this. A times A is the same as what? Well. A squared. And what does A squared represent? This uh, A uh, to the power of one plus one. Okay, good. Yes, that's true. And, and what is a square? What is a what is an exponential represent? It's a what is it? What is a square? Remember what exponentials mean in types? They mean apps, right? This is a map from what to what? What is a square? It's a map from two to a. It's like a map from boolean to a, right? Because boolean is size two, right? Now, now that seems like totally different from a times a. But let's let's unpack it. Why do I say that this information is the same as a? As far as a times a. Let me let me ask you this: If if I had a map from one to a on this very blackboard, not not you know one month thence, you told me how many thing, how many maps are there from one to a? A, the, the number of elements of A, right? Hmm? What is a map from, and remember that little functor exercise I gave you, what's a map from two to A? For, for, for the, so two, the map in the scene, so don't get two, so it's two possibilities. So first possibility, what do you have to pick out? Okay, for the first possibility, say true, you have to pick out a what? An A, an element of A. For the second possibility, you have to pick out an element of, of A. And so this is just like a pair of A's, right? I mean, that, that's really what it is, right? I mean, it's almost like it's a lookup table, right? Um, you have a lookup table if you give me true, I'll give you a certain value of A, you know, call it A1 or A true, right? And if if it's false, I'll give you A sub false, right? So it's it's two values of A. Do you see that? So what I'm saying is a map from two from a, a set of size two mm -hmm. um, to A is the same as a pair of A's. Just write it right at a plus a, right? It's, but but as a map, it makes sense because for each possible value of these two, for each of these two, you have to give me an a, right? Remember that's how functions work. If you if it's mapped from set a, set x to set y, for each value of x, we have to give me a y, right? And that's that's what this is. It's an a cross a. Okay, but let's. Let's let's unpack that. So no no. If I if I iterate a cross a cross a cross a, maybe I'll write some more here just for our heart's content. And I have B of these. 
B toms. Mm -hmm. um, what do I what do I uh, get out? A to, B. A to the power B. B. Right. B. And what I'm saying is that that's the same as a map from what? B, B down to the A for any possible value of B. Right. It's like a lookup table. Right. Do you see that? I, I just index into this, right? And so, so I, I p a possibility, you know, um, a times a times a times a b times. So if I pick for each of these value of a, I could jump for a given value of b. I could look up, you know, maybe it's number three. So I look up one, two, three. Ah, oh, it's that value, right? It's it's that whatever the third value of a is. I have right, um, and. I look it up and I, I get that value. That, that's exactly what this math thing is doing. For each given value of B, I look up A. And this is this is like just writing down the lookup table. It's memorizing this function. It's taking this function and writing it out for every value of B, exactly what the answer is, and putting it in a tabular form. So we could have written it for, you know, bit, um, vertically like this, where there B entries and each of them has a value of you know of, of a in it that is returned if you have that value of b right it's it can it's the same information as as it contains the set of possibilities of this is the same as the set of possibilities of this do you get that it's iterated exponentiation and function max are iterated are equivalent informationally to iterated products as you surmise, just like iterated, how do I do a plus a plus a, uh, and I do this b times, where do I get that? a plus a plus a b times, where do I get b a? I get b a or a b, yeah, I'll, b, I'll call it b a, um, that's good, um, which makes uh, a, a great deal of of sense here in the sense that for each possible value of B, I have an A. It's like a table of possibilities, you know, where we have A on this side and, and B on this side, right? And and here uh, we have multiplication being the same as iterated addition, right? Um, or for each possible value of B, right? Each of these possible values of B. I have an A, right? B times A, each value of B, right? Um, uh, I choose a particular value of A. Do you, you get that? And so the set of possibilities. Okay, but but there's a lot more to go here, right? Um, okay, so how about A is the same as as A to the one power? A. Yeah, and where did I, I just wrote that down, right? I mean, never mind, not one month then. So it was like not five minutes then, right? <laughs> it's this, right? One map to A is the same information content as A. It's the set of possible, the set of possible values of one to the A are one to one correspondence with the values of A. Do you get that? Okay. How about one to the A is the same as one? Just one. Why is that? Just one. So there's just one. So Remember, one is the begins with T terminal, terminal, terminal objects here. And terminal objects have how many arrows going into them? How many morphisms from any other one? Right? So there's only one map from A to one. That makes sense? Okay, how about A to the zero is equivalent to one? Why is that? Why is it for, for what we know about about uh, initial objects. Remember, zero is the what? Initial, initial object. <laughs> That's true, but from the initial object to any other object to A, how many morphisms are there? One. One, right? Um, and A to the zero, that's like, in, in set, what is A to the zero like? It's how many maps are there from the from the initial to A. Yeah, from the empty set to any other set, well, there's one vacuous map because there's nothing to do, right? Um, 
Okay, um, zero to the A is, is a little bit more subtle, right? Um, I would argue it's zero, A is greater than zero. Why, why is zero to the A zero? A is, is not itself empty. Yes, Larissa. Yeah, you, you can't map anything into the empty set because to be to be a legitimate function for all values of a, you have to give me a value and an element from the empty set. But there's nothing you could possibly give. You can't possibly give it unless what is the case? A is empty, right? And if a is empty, if a is empty. There is a unique map from it's a vacuous map because it doesn't you can't you can't do it but it doesn't have to do it because there's nothing in the map right so there's a unique map so it's one otherwise and in math we often treat zero to the zero as kind of it's, it's often nice to treat as one okay um okay uh a times b to the c well we went over that right um uh I think, uh, yes, we, no, we didn't, no, A, A times B, so that's a pair of it can be to the C power. Why is this identical to A to the C times B to the C? Why is that? So it holds an outbreak, but why does it make sense? What if, What is A, B, quantity to the C power? What is, what is that? But it's it's a pair of, a pair of AB. Yeah. And why do I say that that's the same information? Because C produces something from A and can pair the thing it produces. That's right. So all it is, a map from C to, to a pair of AB is just like it's the same information content as a map from A to C and a map from C to B, right? Because in both cases, it's producing an A and it's producing a B. So, so they're one to one correspondence. Give me one, I can give you the other. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Yeah. Um. Uh. Okay. Um. How about A plus B squared? Oh, oh well, we we talked about that last time. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. We we talked about it as as these things. Okay. Um. Uh, so we talked about function. Okay, how about these ones here? C to the B to the A. So do you, do you remember what this is from, from your, your math? C to the B to the A uh, power. I Honestly, I, I should have written it with parents. What I meant to say is, is this. What is, what is that little two? B, B, A, to the power of B times A. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what? that's what's what's written here. What? Yeah? What you have yes, you that's right. right. Yeah, but what is this telling us? This is telling us actually something that we saw at the beginning of this lecture. What is what is this? So so what's the thing I'm writing? What am what am I getting? It's what is the thing on the right hand side? It's okay, it's a pair A B mapping to a what? And I'm saying here it's the same as something, it's it, it's in one-to-one -one correspondence. Given one of those, uh, a map from a pair of A B to a C. That is the there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. Given one of those, I get a unique map which does what? Maps from an A to a B. And map to a C. What does that sound like from the very start of this lecture? Curry. Yes, it's curry. We curry this function on the right, and we cook up a function like on the left. Do you get that? It's really good curry. Uh, and, and, and so here we have something that takes a pair, maps it to C, and instead we stage it. We first take an A, and then we take a B, and then we take a C. And they're one to one correspondence. So they, they they are isomorphic to each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um now this this next one, you, you, the the formatting doesn't come out, so I'm gonna have to write it on the board. This next one, 
it's C to the B power to the A um, equals uh, quantity C to the A power to the B. And I'm saying that those two are in one point one correspondence. What is that? What is that saying? Yes, Larissa. Well, if we use the previous one, we can use the product knowledge to in a such or we have to be to like flip them. Uh-huh. Chant them out by using our yeah. mapping knowledge. Yep. A producing B is needed to produce C. Similarly, uh, for the other one, B producing A is needed to produce C. So either way we need this starting piece. To produce new advantage. Okay, so you're 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 warm with this. This one on the right on the left is saying if if you give me an A, I'll give you a map from B to C. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that's in the same correspondence, or a, as you give me a B, I'll give you a map from an A to the C. They're one to one correspondence. And in short, I can take A and B in either order. I can take either A first and then B and, and give you a C, or I can take B first and then A and give you a C. And given one, I can give you the other. Um, I can uh, losslessly interchange between them. Yes, Tony. So, does that mean that the three of them, the isomorphic ideas? Um, you're saying that, that these three are isomorphic. Yes, this is correct. They're, they're all three of us. So I could have put that up there. And Larissa is, is right. I mean, um, and, and I think that's what she was getting at. We we know that this is the same as a pair. And, and we know that we can make, from earlier, we know that pairs are isomorphic to their reverse. So you can, like, of course, this falls out from the first one if we just switch this is C to the BA. Um, you just get uh, this this sort of uh, equivalent. So yes, all three are isomorphic. Okay. Then we go and define the inverse. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. Yeah, you can define the inverse. Yep, yep. I mean, going from Curry on Curry and and its variants here. Yes, and, and one that goes from an A to a B to a C to one that takes a B to an A to a C. And then, uh, or you know, B to a A to a C, and then vice versa. Yeah, I mean, unpacking them is it's actually not 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 hairy. I mean, it's it's quite uh, uh, qu quite possible. So, what we're seeing here should strike you as kind of, at at once, it's kind of delightfully curious and fun and and interesting, but more deeply. It's telling us that these algebraic type systems are capturing some deep structure mathematically about the relationships. It all works through. If you consider these as counts of, of possibilities, it all works through. If you consider them as isomorphism between possibilities of alternative representations of the same information, all of these hold great you know, possibilities, not only for our intuition, but for computational um, enablement in the form of, like, as I said, optimization or transformation and alternative uh, representation, some of which may be more elegant from a software engineering standpoint. But, you know, when we build things up with algebraic data types, we're building things with, in some sense, some of nature's most natural building we're building up with these incredibly reusable abstractions, products, co-products, exponentials, these things that are, you know, just located deep down and have huge generality in mathematics. However, it should also strike you as really important that you can build these structures up many levels deep. You know, you could have exponent of, of uh, you know, co-products, each of which involves a product, et cetera, um, at, at, at many different levels. But uh, it, the actual compiler 
um, through using a certain directive can automatically drive mappings for these things to, to treat them as functors. Remember, we can lift things to operate on functors. Remember, we, could, we saw earlier, we can lift things, F and G, to operate on products. Remember, we, we've talked about lifting functions that like determine if, bool, if doubles or positive or negative to operate on lifts or on trees or what have you. Here, it can drive all the maps for these. You just build up these data structures. It knows all, all about how to drive these things. So algebraic data structures are incredible in their implications. And one thing we're not going to have time to really talk about well in this course, but it's something we'll explore in a follow-on course, is things like recursive data types. Um, we can consider a list, for example, as consisting either of either, this, this bar could really be a plus, either it's nil, meaning it's kind of nothing, there's nothing in the list, or it's a cons, so that's a pairing, it's a pair, it's a product of an A and a list of A. This is, why do I think it's recursive? Yes, the reason. Because the list of A yep. and the cons is going to go in and either be a nil or yeah. a That's right, and, and so the, the definition on the right refers to the definition on the left, and what this allows is an element that lists that are have no elements or lists with, with one element where this list is nil, and therefore there's just one element, two elements, et cetera. Now, the, the amazing thing here is that by substituting this list in, into this one and successively expanding, right? We take we take that definition, we plug it into here, we expand it further, we expand it further, expand it further. What we get is a just like this is a co-product, we get a co-product of of nil and a and a product of a and a or a, and plus a product of a a a plus a product of a a a a plus a product. What does this look like? What? So I, I, that may look like a strange, bizarre expression, but what is this telling us about a list? What are the possibilities for it? What's the first possibility? Yeah, yeah it's empty. What's the second one? Yeah. Single element. What is this? Yeah. It's equivalent to, to like a pair of possibilities. This is like three. So these are the different possible what of the list. Length and contents of the list, right? It consists of some value of A, of A, of A, of A. Maybe it's int of N, N. So some int, some int, some int, some int, et cetera. Um, which reflects that if you think about the underlying data structures, often we represent lists as, as kind of pairs of, of successive values, and there's a certain relationship here. So, so even things like recursive data structures, we can express in terms of these things like co-products, products, exponentials, et cetera. And uh, this also affords us a good potential. And it turns out, in a kind of strange way, you can reason about these algebraic. Okay. Um, uh, these are bit like data structures where, you know, bit like equations where you have X on both sides or something like that. You can solve that term. So algebraic data structures are at once quite delightful in terms of their mathematical features. They give rise to transparent code by using these reusable building blocks of huge generality. They can prevent subsets of errors because we're building on rock solid implementations. You can efficiently map them to hardware resources because it knows how to efficiently represent a map or how to efficiently represent a co-product or a product. Um, and you can optimize them based on these transformations, different ways of holding the same information, which is exactly what a, a naturalized monkey is. It's just different ways of holding that same information. And you can give potentially intelligent suggestions for possible map matches, given what you know you're trying to trying to match, what the possibilities are you have to handle. So when it comes to types, when it comes to algebraic data types, um, we just have all this clarity of reasoning, familiarity of reuse, rock solid implementations, optimization possibilities. 
basis that we're building up more complex types successively, and potentially the, the opportunities to look for parallelization from well-known data types, which have well-defined invariants and so on, and derivation of functors. You have a lot of work that can be done for you on that. So we've had a, a march through huge material today, and I want to thank you for your patience in, in going through this. This is awesome. Um, we first saw exponential objects in a, in a whirlwind look. These objects that are not limits of diagrams, but have all those nice features of factorization and those, those nice features of having, uh, you know, being able to be the best in a category that, that captures this notion of a mapping, right? And they allow us to have objects that represent maps, represent morphisms in a category, right? Um, and then we saw product types. We saw that we could lift morphisms to operate on the products, that any pair of morphisms um, uh, or the, the pairs of morphisms can be lifted to operate as a mapping between uh, corresponding um, pairs. And we saw product categories that laid the groundwork for monoidal categories, which operate on product category in our structure preserving mappings into the same category and which preserve a set of structures. And we saw that they, that those minoral categories hold perhaps in at least two different ways, product and co-product. And that opened up this set of possibilities that we have here, which is at once beautiful, useful, uh, and deeply significant. So that's all we have time for today. Thank you everyone for all your extra time. And hopefully this has been uh, fun and interesting today. So uh, for 